I had the greatest job in the world, and that's working with dogs. Best in show winner is the French Bulldog. Winston won the National Dog Show. It was amazing, it was exciting. And to have a dog to be number one dog in this country, you have to have great nutrition. And I always fed Pro Plan, just like us. When we eat well, we feel good. And I just love that food and what it's done all these years to all the dogs I bred and all the dogs I've shown. Welcome to Pure Dog Talk. I am your host, Laura Reeves, and I'm really excited, you guys. One of our favorite guests is back, Veronica Wolf from Best in Show Clothes, and we are going to talk just basic what to wear at the dog show, how to be comfortable, how to live your own truth and, and still be respectful of the environment that we're in. Um, we're going to talk about this fall weather's coming up, right? So how do we dress for that? Um, we're going to talk a little bit about good colors with your dogs and stand out versus blend in all kinds of fun stuff we've got for today. So cool beans. <laughs> Thanks, Veronica. I appreciate you joining us. Thank you, of course, for having me. It's a lot of fun. I always enjoy talking to you. And we have a good time. You're... Yeah. Yep. So Indeed. basic bottom line, dog shows, I think for particularly new folks coming in, I, I run into this a lot. You know, they see a pretty traditional dog show attire, either a St. John suit or a Casper suit. And they're like, dude, I'm out, man. <laughs> right. And so let's, let's talk about how, how we can, you know, enter the 21st century while still sort of embracing the respectful dress code that that's sort of the basic of our rather traditional sport. <laughs> yes. Yes. And we talked about this a little bit with Westminster. It is a yeah. very traditional sport. It goes way back. Uh, the oldest, second oldest sport in the country. Yep. And after um, the Kentucky Derby, after the Kentucky Derby. Right. And, and think about the Kentucky Derby. I mean, let's think about this. The Kentucky Derby, you've got big fancy hats and, you know, they have a real display of that tradition. And so yes. we want to kind of bring that vibe of traditional while still being able to be comfortable in our own skin. Right. So when my junior was becoming a teen and bucking the, you know, suits mm -hmm. and, and I reminded her that this is a sport like any sport and every sport has a uniform. I mean, yeah. if you're going to be in the soccer team, you get assigned a uniform and there's no, oh, well, it's not my color, you know, um, too bad. That's, you know, that's what you have to wear. So, um, but fortunately in the dog show world, we have a little more flexibility. So yes. yes, you should be stepping in professionally. I like to tell people like you're going in for an interview, right? Okay. Um, now this is an interview on like a more upscale company mm -hmm. versus, you know, interviewing at Dutch bros. Dutch bros, uh, right. <laughs> so you want to look professional because again, you're representing your breed, you're representing um, your kennel, right? And you may be a breeder who is trying to get connections to breed with your dog and you don't want to go in and sweats because you don't look professional, right? Mm -hmm. So looking professional is the key. Well, what does that mean in the dog show world? You know, classically men will be in two piece suits mm -hmm. or slacks and maybe a tweed blazer for fall, right? Mm -hmm. And the women will either be in professional dresses or a, a two-piece suit, whether it's a pantsuit or a skirt suit. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are some, you know, to those blazers, there are some options and alternatives as well. But that's the general uniform that you see out there. Um, there's so many aspects to this. You know, we're, we might be getting into color and some other things. But you need to look professional. You need to, another, the other op thing you need to consider is your movement when you choose what you're going to wear and you also need to consider what looks good with your color and your dog's color so if you have a table dog you don't have to stack with you know your arms wide out here right, right? right. but if you're stacking a you know, pointer you're kneeling down let me get you kneeling right. down and going right. like this right. if you've got right. a tight blade you can't do that right a hundred percent right and if you are running with you know your great uh, German Shepherd, 
you're going to want a skirt that lets you run. Okay, so the pencil skirt is kind of the classic skirt also if someone chooses to wear a skirt. Pants are completely acceptable on women, and I would love for you as a judge to shout that from the mountaintop. I'm, I am gonna, are... I'm gonna just take, I'm just gonna step in here for a minute, okay? I come from the hyper traditional. Like, I, I, I can count the number of times I showed a dog as a professional handler in slacks on one hand, and in, mm. in every one of those instances, I had just had abdominal surgery. Okay, I'd had a hysterectomy and I was just not quite as, you know, agile as I might be. And 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 that was it. I mean, that was it. And now that I'm judging, <clears throat> particularly, I have found um, it's going to have to be a pretty high bar. Like I judged in a skirt suit at my national specialty, but, you know, that's about it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I have found a great deal more comfort in slacks for the type of movement that I'm doing judging. And I have yeah. to tell you, I'm getting ready to go show a dog actually again at another national specialty. And I'm really toying, really thinking hard about doing it in pants because again, as I've gotten older, so sorry, kids, this is for the, the more mature of us here in the, the podcast. It's really hard to get down on your hands and knees, like to kneel down and then get back mm -hmm. up again. It's yep. really a lot harder to do it in a skirt. So <laughs> there's, there yep. is legitimately like a, you know, can I do, can I physically do this thing I want to do really badly? And, and if I'm going to be able to do it, I am more likely to be able to do it semi gracefully <coughs> in a pair of slacks. Yes. So, I mean, these are all considerations and the, the world dog show world today, um, I think overall really has like loosens its collar a little bit, if you will, to, yeah. you know, um, with the exception of some of the really highest end events that, right. that a pair of nice uh, pantsuit, um, even separates, really good mm -hmm. quality slacks mm -hmm. with a pretty jacket and a top, yep. even yep. as a judge or as a handler, it's fine. It's really yep. fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was two other factors I was going to say. What is the show? That was another mm -hmm. factor. Mm -hmm. um, and then, oh, gosh, I think I just lost the other one. But but what in oh, the weather? The weather. Yes. What is oh, the yeah. show? weather? So, you know, how, what kind of movement do you have to do? What kind of dog do you have? What is the show? Because obviously, if you're going to the AKC Nationals in Orlando versus going to the two-day show in Longview, Kelso, Outdoors and it's in August. the rain, yeah. Outdoors in the rain, you're going to wear different clothing, right? Right. So um, that's a consideration also. Um, and then the Love Wolf show that you're going to. And, you know, you see that in the summertime. I mean, just saw that in Enumclaw. Yep. So many women were in these cotton flowy mm -hmm. dresses that are sleeveless. Did you see just Vicky Seiler in her cute little dresses? I mean, and she's one of our best dressed judges. Right. So, so I am often, um, and a recommend a suggestion want to watch the people who to you look put together. When you look around the dog show, who do you see that looks really together, really comfortable, really professional, really solid dress like them, right? <laughs> like that's, that's, that's yep. a, a really fair way to take your cues. Yep. As long as it matches your dog. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. and you know, on the on the pants, for example, we were at uh, an Affen Pincher National a couple years ago, and there was a gal with a black Affen Pincher and um, a deep gray Bouvier. Mm -hmm. She wore really nice slacks. They were wide leg, but not so wide that they went in the Affen's mm -hmm. face. She just wore a button up white shirt and ballet flats, and she looked amazing. And it was a great contrast with her dog, and she wasn't mm -hmm. in a two piece suit, and you know, all that. Uh, so there are options for those people who really loathe the two-piece suit, just saying. Uh, but, um, yeah, there are options. There, there and are pants. options. And again, mm -hmm. I think the most important part, and this is what I will always say to anyone, particularly people that are coming, that are new, that are just like so stressed out about it, be comfortable. Right. Yes. I don't mean be comfortable in your pajamas and your slippers. We're not in Walmart, yeah. but yeah. be comfortable, be comfortable in how it represents who you are as a person, how it yes. allows you to move with your dog, 
and how it fits into the community around you. Those are three different that, comfort levels, right? Exactly. Exactly. And you, you know, maybe you're love the Bohemian style, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so wear a denim jacket with a, a nice top, you know, and a skirt that's effective for the way you need to move without flowing in your dog's face. Right. So that's so, an and important you, one. And, and yeah. I, we've mentioned it a couple of times and I'm going to pull that out, Veronica, because it's so critical. If you have a knee high or lower dog, right? So if your dog is shorter than your kneecap, your skirt needs to be above your kneecap because when you walk, and if that skirt has any flare to it, it's going to flare into the dog's face. It will obstruct the dog's movement. It will obstruct the judge's view of the dog. And it will probably make your dog move funny because it's trying to, yeah. it's yes. like they're trying to get out of the curtains, right? So, yeah, exactly. that's easy. so exactly. an above the knee skirt or a pair of slacks. Yep. Yep. And just make sure the slacks aren't, I mean, there's some Palooza pants now that are super fun. I personally love them with some wide leg linen. Just mm -hmm. make sure if you're showing that Chihuahua that the wide leg linen isn't also, you know, getting in their face. So, yep. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So we're so coming I, into we're fall. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, since we were on not conflicting with the dog, yes. I thought I'd also bring up, we have to make sure our color doesn't conflict go. with the dog as well. So uh, when my daughter started, she had a black F and pincher mm -hmm. and it's a table dog, right? So we quickly were instructed, no black, navy blue or bur deep burgundy tops because you put the dog and you stack behind him and the dog disappears. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the pants. If you are ha or a skirt, if you're mm -hmm. showing a black lab and you're wearing black pants, I mean, unless you're trying to hide that top line, you know, you there have you been times <laughs> <laughs> then you're going to there's not going to be a nice silhouette on the dog as yeah. well as you know, this is a fun top. I particularly love it. But if I had a beaver terrier and I was putting them on tricolored beaver terrier, this, in my opinion, would be too much pattern. So it consider would make your eyes. Yeah. Yep. If your dog's pattern, <clears throat> you don't want a lot of pattern. If the dog's dark, you don't want to be dark. If the dog's mm -hmm. white, don't wear a white blazer. Mm -hmm. So you want a nice silhouette of your dog with you behind you. And I have literally had people in my booth that I've said, they are tried it on. Well, well, it looked good with my dog. Okay, well, stand in front of the mirror with your dog and hold it, you know, about table height or put the dog in front of you on the floor mm -hmm. and look in the mirror at your mm -hmm. dog and what mm -hmm. you're looking at and see if there's a nice, pretty silhouette. Absolutely. So. Troop Canyon is revolutionizing medical insurance for pets by providing the best possible experience to our members. And it's not some space age dream. It's happening now. We pay your veterinarian directly while you're checking out, and we're the only ones who can, which means you have decisions in seconds, and you don't have to wait for reimbursement. So unlike with other providers, you'll keep more money in your pocket. Ask your veterinarian if Trupanion can pay them directly, because there's pet insurance, and then there's Trupanion. I'm Laura Reeves, the host of Pure Dog Talk, and I'm coming today to talk to you about Brilliant Pad. And it is amazing and an incredible way for me to do my potty training with the puppies and not ever have to touch any yucky stuff. Brilliant Pad literally rolls the mess up and you never touch it. So I really wanted to talk to you guys about that, share with you the experience I had with it. It's like the most amazing thing you've ever seen. You know, there's another conversation that goes along with that you actually mentioned earlier. Is it a good color for you, for example, yes. and your dog? Yep. So you and your dog may not be the same season on the season charts. Right? Yes. Yes. So the whole color be beautiful from the eighties. Yes. Um, so I think that that's an important one. You know, for example, I showed a Manchester Terrier. I was not accustomed to showing a lot of black dogs and I had a lot of black clothes. And I had to go through and find something I could wear. But I am not particularly good in like white. No, never happened. Um, coffee and all the other beverages just <laughs> <don't> no. <laughs> um, I am not particularly good in like chartreuse or, you know, some of those really shocking right bright colors. So I had right. to find what was a good color for me <laughs> that would still be okay behind the Manchester. 
And I wound yeah. up going with a lot, honestly, of like tan like that mm. and in the kind mm. of muted um, pastels and, and sort of that area. That's what right. worked for me. Yeah. There's the whole Color Me Beautiful thing in the 80s did not die and it's yeah. still real. Yep. It's called color analysis. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know your colors, there's a bazillion YouTube videos, there's articles, uh, but there is a real, a simple way to do it is go in the store with no makeup and pick up something that's royal blue and hold it under your chin in front of a mirror. If it just looks like you got washed out and you're mm -hmm. sick, that's not a good color for you. you sure, know, truth, I look like I'm in um, like liver dialysis or kidney dialysis. <laughs> I look like I'm dying. It's gross. Right. So horrible. Yeah, there are some colors that do that for me. Ooh, now, I, on that point, if you have a favorite blazer and you hold it up and it's like, oh, it does that to me. It's a couple of tricks you can do. Uh, like a blazer like this, the main color actually is the under undershirt. So you could cheat and wear a brighter shirt or even maybe like a cropped turtleneck mm -hmm. that would bring that color that is good for you. Mm -hmm. The other thing I read one stylist said was just wear, if you wear makeup, wear heavier makeup that day, a little mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. blush, mm -hmm. a little more outline lift, make sure your eyes have mascara and just pump up your makeup a little bit so it doesn't wash you out as much. Mm -hmm. So those are a couple tricks you can do if you have that favorite beige that sweater that you don't look good in like me. I don't look good in. I don't well, look see, good. In I love though. khaki is like my, I am like down for khaki <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it works for me. Right. So everybody just has to find what works for them on yep. the color thing. Okay. Yep. All right. So good. We got the color down. Now let's talk about my, I was, I was headed for fall. We're like pumpkins yes. and pumpkin spice and you know, oh, had work. one today, had one today. <laughs> no, it is not September. That is not allowed. There's wow. laws, just like you can't put up your Christmas stuff before Halloween. You can't have pumpkin spice before September 1st. I'm going to be cursed because I'm wearing a white jacket and I had pumpkin spice. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you those are both no for me. But anyway, <laughs> um, well, you know, so what I'm saying, right? Fall is coming. By the time this podcast yes. goes up. It's going to be, it's going to be like into sweater weather. And I, yes. uh, it took me a really long time when I was a young handler to, to wrap my head around the idea of showing in boots, right? Like dressage mm -hmm. boots, right? Like, like, right. And I right. will never forget being at the Monroe Whidbey Island Kennel Club in November yep. in yep. flats running when it back, when it used to be between like three or four buildings instead of just two. And it was half raining, half snowing, 33 and a half degrees, miserable AF in my little flat shoes that were soaked. And I see Taffy McFadden float by in the most beautiful pair of flat heeled tall boots. I'm like, Oh, sweet Jesus. I am buying this. <laughs> yeah. And so you know, she wears those a lot. She, she wears them a lot. Enough. I have gotten to the point. I have a particular pair of boots that are more comfortable than my favorite pair of shoes that I will wear often. But uh, where I get into trouble and where I see a lot of people get into trouble, and I need you to speak to this, and we've kind of touched on it briefly, but let's kind of go there. Skirts and boots, lengths. <laughs> right, like there's right. A, there's a thing there. Right. Um, I feel like it either needs to be like above the boot with a good two or three inch gap or about halfway down the boot. And mm. if you've got a toy breed, you can get away with that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or there are some skirts that have a slight A-line and not too flowy that you can still uh, do with running with your dog. Um, mm. I, in my booth, I tell people, just go run, go run <laughs> and see if that works with right. your dog and literally right. take eight or 10 right. you know, steps. Right. Um, so, and then if there's a gap, I just like there to be more of a consistency in color. So yeah. if you're wearing a black skirt and black boots, I don't want to see white legs, you know, the light colored legs, if that's your skin tone, you know, I, I prefer to see a consistent color because I think mm -hmm. it's a visual distraction, particularly yeah. when someone's looking down that way at your dog, it's mm -hmm. a visual distraction. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, this is, happens a lot too, particularly we're getting ready for Tri-Cities at the end of September. The mornings are dewy, wet, and cold. 
right? Okay. And so you go out in your shoes and your shoes are soaking wet. There are some really nice, actually waterproof yes. uh, the, the rubber little, boots. You okay. little rubber booties that yep. you can buy yep. sometimes like at Freddy's or something, you know, Fred Meyer yep. for those of us. Um, certain places, they're like gardening shoes. Yes. So yes. cute. Yes, like, they're like very, very, a lot of cute bugs. <laughs> yep. Yes. Just be, I would say on the boots, there are a lot of adorable boots too, but mm -hmm. maybe not boots with frogs all over them for the dog show. You Come know, something on, more cute. Than, oh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> there are some nice ones in the equestrian world. So there's yes. a lot of people that yes. dip into both in the dog show yep. world. So if you're one of those persons and you already have a pair, well, then yep. you're lucky. Yeah, your Beep. paddock boots work great for mornings yep. at Tri Cities yep. and some yep. of these outdoor shows that we have this time of year. I'm a little heartbroken. I'm a little heartbroken. I've been shot down on my frog shoes, but I'm saying. <laughs> right, right. Well, you can get the one with the hearts all over it. I, you um, know, I have frog earrings, so that's just going to have to do for me. There you go. There you go. So um, just be prepared for cool, wet mornings and rain, as you said. So yeah. there's lots of cute boots to choose from. Um, rain, wear. So <laughs> here's, you know this. Here's an old handler thing. Never go anywhere, particularly in the Pacific Northwest, but anywhere in the world without a little lightweight rain jacket shoved in your bag. Just, yes, it lives there because yes. I promise you, you're going to go to the dog show. That's always 105 degrees and it is going to pour down rain. Ain't Guaranteed. him call, ain't him call mm -hmm. this year. I said to my I daughter, bring coat. I and left she Saturday. Did. I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> the last day. Yep. The last group, yep. she's showing a dachshund, smooth coat dachshund, and it just dumps on them. Yeah. Yep. Outside. Yep. 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 She said it was the shortest down and back ever. <laughs> so I'm saying it have a key, have a lightweight raincoat. If you know it's yep. gonna be rainy, invest, particularly invest in a good quality, you know, classy raincoat that Best. can be traded out for your blazer. I have several of them right. over the years. Um, yep. They're very handy. Another thing, and this is absolute personal experience that I'm going to offer that you can suggest to your clients, Veronica, do not wear a hood in the ring. Mm. Wear a hat. And I'm going to tell you okay. why. Um, okay. the, the hood knocks out all your peripheral vision. Oh. And I was in a raincoat with a hood at a dog show a gazillion years in can be, it was pouring rain and I was showing an Akita who was being a little difficult and I had the hood over my head. So when I went to turn him around, I didn't know that the Malamute was up my ass and I turned it and they were nosed and we came this close to a very significant and ugly dog fight in the dog show oh. in the group. Room. And so I learned my lesson <laughs> um, yeah. and I have never, ever, ever worn a hood in the ring or anywhere where I need my peripheral vision again. Oh, so if you've wow, got a raincoat good. and you're showing your dog, get a hat, get a ball cap, do something. Do not use your, or if you're going to use your hood, make sure it's strapped down tight around your face so that you have your peripheral vision because that's an excellent you point. really need to be paying attention to your animals and everything around you. Everybody gets all crowded up when it's raining, right? Like you're all yes, yes. crowded in. I had to stand out in the rain by myself because there was no rain room under the tent because my dog was so jacked up at that point. The owners were not very happy with me. So <laughs> words to the wise, wear a yeah. hat, not a hood. Yeah. And layers, you know, you can wear a silk tank top. Mm -hmm. under a turtleneck with a really pretty, the quilted vest, I think are very pretty. Mm -hmm. Just be aware your vest. I, I personally love fleece. I love the softness of fleece. I love to wear it. It's terrible with dogs. You know, it just like is a hair magnet, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, if you're going to wear one, I try to wear the ones with the fleece underneath and something yeah. on the outside. Um, there's a couple of vendors at shows that sell mm -hmm. these kind of uh, vests too as well. But, uh, I think a turtleneck and a, a vest, a skirt, and boots <coughs> look really classy. They look very hunt to me, very hunt mm -hmm. country. Yeah, uh, Amy Rutherford the... pulls that look off better than almost anybody. <coughs> she does it really, really well. Yeah, yeah. So completely acceptable. I also think you can wear a nice double-breasted raincoat, maybe mm -hmm. with a pattern or even solid, mm -hmm. and you can keep that on. 
we've been at, again, uh, that's our experience in the Pacific Northwest. There's a show, Tri-Cities Outside. It's on the Columbia River. <clears throat> it can get sideways wind and rain. It was snowing, and the junior's judge went, just everybody leave your coat on you know, it's just so try to get a nice looking coat because you may have times where you're wearing your coat in the ring you know yep yep i so. i have shown dogs <laughs> in a full rain suit i've been outdoors in rain pants and a raincoat mm -hmm. and run rain boots and we're out there showing dogs they're my favorite days i'm like i didn't have to put on any nylons man <laughs> <Got it. laughs> and speaking of nylons in the cold weather you might switch over to uh tights Tights, yep. They rip less. Mm -hmm. They're warm. You can get them pretty thick now. There's a lot of varieties mm -hmm. online and in the stores. It's easier to find tights now than it is to find hose, actually. Yeah. So, yeah, I I've kind of gone away from hosiery. I, it's another reason yes. to wear pants. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, and hand warmers in the pockets help too. Oh with your, yes. You know, your hands yes, are getting cold. Are good. And actually. I have used, you can get those little thin hand warmers. You can put them in the bottom of your shoes too. <laughs> yes. Yes. Indeed. Um, okay. So very good. We've had winter weather, color, what to wear generally. So what's our, what's our um, closing um, uh, suggestion here, Veronica? Uh, let's see. Oh, alternatives to blazers, because we were kind of talking yeah. about dressing to your truth, right? So mm -hmm. not everybody wants to be in a blazer. I personally hate blazers. I've got broad shoulders, busty, and I'm tall. You put me in a blazer with shoulder pads, and I look like I'm a defensive linebacker, right? So um, they're not my favorites. So a lot of things I like to um, find, and, and more than ever, you can find stretchy fabric. Like this mm -hmm. one actually has some stretch to it. Just look for spandex in the mm -hmm. list of mm -hmm. uh, fabrics. So a lot of them have stretch, but cardigans look great. If you get a nice cardigan, mm -hmm. a navy blue cardigan with, you know, a floral skirt or just something, you know, whatever, you can find some really nice cardigans and you can find them in every color of the rainbow. Mm -hmm. A lot of stores carry them, Chico's. Mm -hmm. We ha don't carry them as much, but sometimes I have them. Um, get a good quality one because you don't want it pilling yeah, in. Yeah, not those cheap, nasty uh, rayon ones. Yeah, don't don't waste your time on the, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you can also get knits that aren't St. John. There's acrylic knit. Masuk is a brand I really like. Mm -hmm. And... Um, K and Y is an acrylic brand, but you can just look up acrylic knit blazers or acrylic knit mm. Um, mm. cardigans. Mm. They wear like iron. They don't pill. There's a ton of stretch. Really like those. Um, Chico's has a line called Travelers, which is like a acrylic blend also, and that has a ton of stretch. And they occasionally come out with a cut that looks like a blazer. I have mm -hmm. a couple of mm -hmm. those. I tend to wear those. So when I'm shopping. You know, you find they have a couple of these in my booth. I'm not sure they're online, but um, you can look in my booth. I also just look for I look in the cardigan section for things that have a lapel. Right. It looks like a blazer, but it's a knit. Gives you a little more comfort. Uh, different brands have them at different times. Um, the other thing you can do is a, a top and a vest, particularly mm -hmm. if it's cooler weather. Mm -hmm. A nice looking vest, of course. Um, There's some really oh, beautiful, you know, tweed or not so much the puppy yep. vest, but the tweed vest, even a nicely done puppy vest can be good. Yep. It just kind of depends on what you're, what you're trying to pull off. But I think that that, that particular look that started a few, I don't know, it's probably been five, 10 years ago. I really find to be particularly in the fall, quite attractive. Yes. Yes. And they have quilted ones with the edging is fleece mm -hmm. or like, um, mm -hmm. not fleece, but. I can't think of it right now, but it looks fluffy just on the edges, you know, yeah, it's um, right. fake fur or something. Just, yeah. Yeah. Fake fur, that kind of thing. So I've that's got very another pretty. one for you real quick because it's a personal, I love scarves. We must oh. have a two minute thing on scarves. Okay. okay. Sorry guys. We're going to do a, an episode just for you, but this is going to be all girls today. I need to know, <laughs> talk to us about scarves, how to wear them right, how to tie them right. Two minutes, go. <laughs> oh, two minutes. Uh, well, I need a scarf, but I don't have one. Okay. But uh, there's lots of ways 
lots of ways to wear them. And that's another, first of all, if I have a scarf around my neck, I am not cold. So it's another great warming layer that just really helps. I would say keep it tucked, you know, keep mm -hmm. it kind right. of close no in and tight or so that the ends are tucked maybe into your blazer. Yeah. Uh, pick a color again that coordinates with what you have. That's a good color for your face too. Mm -hmm. um, there's, oh, a bazillion ways to tie them really you if you go to youtube and how to tie your scarf right. you can get a lot of different options the ascot look is i think quite attractive and for the gentlemen so not you yes. know yeah. um, if you were doing like your top 20 and ascot would be mm. super sharp depending yep. on your breed you know um so I personally like scarves too. Just it can't again, nothing flowy. Right. So one of the one of the things I would also say how to dress is tight is right. You know, things should be kind of close to your body. You know, they should not be flapping and distracting or getting in the way of the dog. Or, you know, if you're but not uh, constricting, you're, right? They should skin not the body, right. not hug it. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes we we don't want to count the rings on the tree mm -mm. <sighs> so um but yeah so be careful with that and um yeah if for example my blazer is open and if you're walking with a toy breed that's absolutely fine but if you're running with a sporting dog an open blazer is not a good idea exactly so yeah, yeah. those are those yeah. are important ones scarves are one of my absolute favorite um you know, accessory items. I'm not big on much of anything, but scarves and shoes, man, I I'm all about it. boxes. So <laughs> as soon as fall comes, the scarf yep. goes on. Exactly. Like, oh, it makes exactly. all the difference in the world. Absolutely. Makes all, the difference. all right. Well, Veronica, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You are always, always fun and fabulous to talk to. And I hope we have offered folks some ideas. So thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And I know people are watching because I've had people come to my booth and Good. say like, I really Good. appreciate the video on Westminster because I have right. no idea what to right. wear and it's my first right. time. Right. You know, so, so thank you so for having if you're, me. If you're around the Pacific Northwest and you want more one-on-one, -on -one, you can probably find Veronica at a dog show. So. Yes. Or my website, bestinshowclothes.com. There you so. go. Good deal. All right. Thanks thank a lot, you. Veronica. Take care. <laughs>